this show not tackling hard problems. That ends tonight. We're finally going to take on society's most pressing issue, tangled phone cords. Yeah. Yeah. Any other late night show that doesn't take this on is a coward. Yeah. I said it. Except for Colbert, he produces us. Anyway, that's why our next game is Untangle This. Each of you have been given the tangled cords of an electronic device. Your task is to get it untangled as fast as possible while answering a very complicated question. Your goal is to untangle your cord and answer your question before time runs out. The catch is you must not stop talking. If at any point you fall silent, you lose. Mm -hmm. Maria, you're up first. Come on over. Your question is, <laughs> your question is, how can you love others if you don't love yourself? <laughs> 60 seconds on the clock. Untangle. Okay. You can love others as long as you're paid enough. And within Los Angeles, the living wage is usually around $48, as long as you have a roommate. A roommate is important. Other things it's important if you want to feel love is you do things that are for free. My husband and I, we go to the dog uh, park, and we fall over, and we let the dogs run over us. And we call it a love festival, where the only ticket is a smile. And then. We go to free libraries. Free libraries uh, have, are filled with children's books. Have you ever read Peppa Pig? Oh my God. She's like filled with like great ideas. Like, I'm not going on the first day of school. And I'm not going on the ski bus. And she's like so happy and pumped. And she's all in like primary colors. And you know, it's like, that's just it's free, you know? And I could read that all day. Now, sometimes a little library gets Dan Brown. Take out your own trash. You know, you shouldn't be leaving that stuff just anywhere. Uh, there's just too many Dan Brown titles. Uh, and uh, other things that are free, um, you know what you could do is you could just go onto a, a public area and start uh, yelling that you want fudge, uh, that you just need fudge. And maybe somebody's got fudge on hand. You know, you don't know. Uh, I don't think I can do it. so much during that scene. It was so good. I didn't even care that it wasn't getting untangled yeah. physically because emotionally I was getting untangled. 3,000 oh. points. 3,000 yeah. points. Yeah. All right, Vinny, you're up next. Please come on over here. You will. <laughs> Your question is, is it possible to live an ethical life in capitalist America? <laughs> yes. 60 seconds on the clock. It is, it is possible to live an ethical life under capitalist America, but of course you have to literally live under capitalist America. <laughs> By which I mean you must retreat to the networks of sewers and tunnels <laughs> that wind their way beneath the city, and there, in the darkness and humidity, you will find peace and success. You should be down there with the proletariat eating rats. <laughs> down there, it is in the depths <laughs> where, while, while you hunt roaches, and light fires with the methane gas pockets <laughs> that find their way stuck upon the brick walls, that you will find true peace. You see, for in the sewers, we must work together. In the sewers, we lift each other up. It is beneath the city. It is beneath the city where kings and queens do not exist. It is beneath the city where we find ourselves alone, but together as one. There is no peace but the peace in unity. Community, togetherness, power. We must fight forward. We must push ourselves forward. The society is collapsing in on itself. We find ourselves enmeshed in a society which values not the money which we produce, but values instead the value that we bring with our art, with our power, and with our Yes! Woohoo! Time is up! Head on back! Who cares? There. Who cares? Wow! Wow! Oh my god! Wow. Oh my god. Wow.
they didn't even oh. cut you off because we knew you could do it. <laughs> and we were all so, that was, I've never been a part of something that pure. <laughs> that was, the energy in here was absolutely insane. 10,000 points to me. <laughs> Finally, Pete, you're up. Come on over. All right. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Yeah. Is that from something? No. Yeah, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there was, a, there was a flavor in the air that people were like, He's doing it from memory. <laughs> like, but like, what was that? No, oh. it was everyone. I could feel the stage vibrating. That Me was too. insane. Anyway, yeah. we'll get ready to follow that. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Uh, Taylor, get ready to swap the order in the air. I know I was going <laughs> to say. <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely right. And second up is Pete. <laughs> Your question is, how can you have empathy for your parents while still knowing that they let you down? Wow. 60 seconds on the clock, untangle. Wow, okay. Well, they got married in the 70s, guys. <laughs> it's not weird that their marriage wasn't a 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's weird that I thought it should have been. <laughs> I mean, it was all sideburns and cigarettes. I mean, doctors. Doctors were still smoking. <laughs> when my dad met my mom in a bar on Cape Cod. <laughs> okay, it might be a little turbulent, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they did their best, I was there, and <laughs> it's okay. I mean, they, you know, they're still doing their best. My, my parents' idea of romance is watching Jeopardy <laughs> at volume 150. <laughs> and, and my dad yells out his guess his wrong guess <laughs> over the actual answer so neither of them know what the real answer was. <laughs> and they scream at one another. One time my mom had a Bible study and in the middle of it, my dad said to the pastor, pastor, do you ever go in the bathroom and play with your dude to do? <laughs> and he said, what? And my dad said, this is real. He said, that's when you take the empty toilet paper roll and go do do do. <laughs> So yeah, my fervently religious mother might have a few notes for this, for this wild man. <laughs> so you know, God, this is impossible. No! This is impossible. I apologize to every perfectionist who is fixating on this. Oh, people are so mad. This is how we keep people awake for the rest of the show, because yeah. they're just vibrating with anger right now. No, I get it. Yeah. To, as a remedy, go on YouTube and type in oddly satisfying montage. <laughs> it's just like cutting candy bars and stuff. You'll love it. He's right. Peace. <laughs> points for that. It's great. Thank you. Great job, everyone. I've never felt more unraveled. When we come back, it's hashtag wars. Stick around. <laughs> Congrats to last night's hashtag wars winner.